Hey, what's going on, guys? Meteorologist Jonathan Keg is with you. This is another edition of Tropics Watch. And thankfully, things have quieted down. Of course, we are in the last month of hurricane season, but we just had a rare occurrence, a landfall in the United States. Only the third time ever we had a hurricane make landfall in Florida, and those record books go back well into the 1800s. So certainly a rare occurrence. In this video, we are going to talk about Nicole, of course. First, though, I want to show you the Atlantic Basin. We're going to take a checkup on it to see if anything is brewing out there in the last couple of weeks officially of hurricane season. Of course, that officially comes to an end on December 1st, and it can't end soon enough. And then we're going to take a look at why was Hurricane Nicole so bad? We had so many questions on, oh, this is only a tropical storm. Oh, this is only a Category 1 hurricane. And then you see the video coming out of places like Brevard County, Volusia County, Flagler County on the east coast of Florida, displaced from where the center actually came ashore on Hutchinson Beach. So we're going to break all that down. There are several reasons why. Again, you can't really say it's only a tropical storm or only a Category 1. We'll get into that in a few minutes. And then stick around towards the end of the video because there are several crazy stats so far this hurricane season that I want to share to you. These will no doubt blow your mind. So we are going to get all into that over the next few minutes. The best news of the weekend, the best news of the day here is that no new development is expected over the next five days there are just a few disorganized thunderstorms out there there's nothing going on in the gulf of mexico there's nothing going on in the caribbean and those are the two areas that we would look for tropical development late in the season it's where nicole originated from thunderstorms that kind of migrated off of south america worked their way into the caribbean then got its act together a little bit as a big dip in the jet stream kind of lifted that north into the bahamas and then eventually into Florida, it was pushed by that big ridge of high pressure. Again, we call that the ridge over troubled waters setup because it just kind of steers it right on into land. Again, mentioned that typically we do see development when we get late season development right on into the Caribbean. And again, that is square in on climatology. Now, typically we do have a cold front that kind of forces these things out to sea. You see, again, the climatology would favor something to move over Hispaniola or Cuba and then push out towards Bermuda and then kind of die off into the North Atlantic. That wasn't the case this time around. We had a big area of high pressure again kind of anchored over New England, which instead of promoting something to go out to sea, forced it right on in to Florida. So that was the difference there. And again, that's why you always can't go off of climatology either all right so we are almost done officially anyway certainly you can still get development after the season but it becomes less and less likely that these storms interact with land by that point of the season of course nicole was the exception to that rule you see where we at the yellow line marks where we are at and again just about two weeks left to go in the hurricane season now officially coming to an end on december 1st all right, so there are three reasons why Nicole was so bad. And we talk about this a lot. Don't just focus on the category of the hurricane or the strength of the tropical storm because there are so many other impacts. We had a tropical storm in 2001. If anybody's watching from Texas, you know what I'm talking about. Tropical storm Allison. It was the record holder for rainfall in Texas until we had Harvey. But that was just a tropical storm, and that devastated Texas enough that that name is retired. There was also Erica down in Central America. Caused enough damage and enough death and destruction that we don't use that name anymore because it is retired. So again, it's important to always pay attention to the impacts of the storm rather than the category the calling card the personality as we often say are different with each and every storm and the big deal with with uh, nicole was the wind field we started battering the east coast of florida days before we even had a defined center of this storm because of that upper level low that was just kind of meandering off of the florida coast that eventually lifted those thunderstorms up towards the turks and caicos into bahama into the bahamas what was different with this one is, and in your typical hurricane, you get the winds 
tightly packed around the center, kind of like Ian. Again, the worst of the damage when it comes to Ian, which was very widespread, of course. But the worst of it, where he had 130, 140 mile per hour winds, was right around the center. Here, the strongest winds were north of landfall. So we had most of the damage and the strongest wind gusts displaced north of the center of circulation. So again, it was a weird system. It had those subtropical origins. It was kind of rooted in that upper level trough that was eventually and eventually took on those tropical characteristics but nonetheless the wind field was extremely large it generates more power so the storm surge was greater than your typical strong tropical storm or weak low-end hurricane and the waves were certainly much bigger because there were days and days of the atlantic just being battered around by this thing so that was number one number two we had higher than normal astronomical high tides. So already, even before the storm, take that storm out of it, the high tides were normal, were higher than normal anyway. We call those king tides. We had the full moon the Tuesday prior to landfall. So that already set the stage for devastation. On top of that, of course, we had Ian come through six weeks earlier, and that destroyed a lot of the dunes in Brevard. Flagler in Volusia County destroyed a lot of the seawalls. So putting the two things that I just mentioned in combination with that, the ocean was just able to do whatever it wanted. It came up unimpeded and you saw the devastation. If you have not seen the video out of Volusia County, Wilbur by the Sea, Daytona Beach Shores, Ponce Inlet, I'm going to post those links in the description, you can click on those web stories. That will take you to clickorlando.com, and you can see some of the aftermath of Nicole. And that will show you again why it is so, so important to focus on the impacts rather than the category. Because each storm is different. They have their own personality. And that, was, that played out in full force, unfortunately, in Florida and we are thinking about everybody that has been impacted because again what had started as a quiet season and we were saying early on don't don't just assume that the season is going to end quietly because it started quietly again we saw that 92 with Andrew it only takes one unfortunately now it's only taken three Fiona of course impacting Puerto Rico with 30 plus inches of rain devastation there Ian in Southwest Florida and now Nicole on the east coast of the state. And again, I know a lot of people on the outside looking in. This was, this was just a Category 1 strike. Look at the damage that it caused. Crazy. So here is where we stand. We are now through the end storm. And of course, we've had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back hurricanes in November. Lisa, Martin, and Nicole all developed in November. Of course, the strongest two hurricanes were Ian and Fiona. Ian, of course impacting land look at this mind-blowing stat it's time to blow your mind now in terms of these hurricane stats absolutely crazy what happened this year august is one of the biggest months that we have in the hurricane season in terms of tropical development we pitched a shutout zero named storms let alone hurricanes but in november we have now had three hurricanes develop it's just crazy i think it's only the third or fourth time that we have had more than it's only the second time we've had more than three uh hurricanes develop in the month of november so again just absolutely crazy stuff happening in the atlantic this year and again it's just a reminder that the two things we really saw play out this year was it only takes one. And again, we ended up, unfortunately, right at the end of the season, just getting hammered with, uh, with three big ones here. And that's not even to mention some of the devastation in Belize with Lisa. Again, that was only a Category 1 hurricane as well. And I know there were a lot of people that we were talking to on this channel from Belize that were reporting the damage to us. Um, so there was a lot of devastation there. Of course, the Turks and Caicos also got hit from Fiona. So, again, it's been an awful, awful end to the season. It's not over yet, but there aren't any strong indications that 
we are looking at anything coming back down the pipeline at this point. I wouldn't write off something in the Caribbean over the next week to 10 days or so. There's a very weak signal down in that area and maybe the residual impact still from that MJO pulse that came through. That was what kind of helped Nicole get going. We were talking two weeks ago that we were likely going to see something develop in the Caribbean exactly where it did. We saw that because of the MJO, Madden Julian oscillation, it, that convective pulse of thunderstorms that goes around the globe every 30 to 60 days, and that can enhance or suppress tropical development when it's uh, hurricane season. And uh, unfortunately, that's exactly what it did to give us that late season push there. And we're hoping that it kind of pipes back down again. There's nothing imminent. So that's some good news. We're going to, of course, watch it for you closely here. But again, we are thinking of everybody, particularly in Florida, uh, that has just taken on so much devastation over the past couple of days when it comes to really that storm surge uh, from Hurricane Nicole. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. If you like the content that we put out, please subscribe to this channel. You can hit that red button there. That will uh, give you updates every single time that we go live. If you hit that notification bell as well, hit me up on Twitter at Jonathan Kegis or Jonathan Kegis News 6 on Facebook. We can continue that conversation over there. Or, of course, post that in the comments below, and I will get back to you. Hope everybody is doing well that have been impacted by this late-season surge of tropical activity. Have a great rest of your weekend.